Good evening, everyone. Hello and welcome to Monday Night Live. I'm Julia, and I am the owner of the Paper Ink Boutique here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And I do this every Monday night. And tonight we are going to be playing with Lindy's Magical Mica Powders and embossing folders. Hello, everyone. Just so you know, Glenn is backstage uh, on StreamYard here, and he will be answering any questions. He'll also be putting some of your questions up on the screen so that I can answer them for you. So go ahead, ask questions, make comments, and Glenn uh, will be helping me moderate. So thank you, Glenn, even though you can't see him or hear him, he is there. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. So yeah, like I said, it's going to be all about Lindy's and it's all going to be about embossing folders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my overhead camera in. We're going to flip down so we can get started right away because I got a lot of stuff to share you, share with you. So let me flip over. Oh, there we go. Tried to flip the camera before it uh, showed up on screen so I didn't make anyone ill. But yeah, there we go. Okay, so I was just doing a little bit of playing around with some embossing folders and with the uh, Lindy's Magicals. Some of these I like better than others, but they're all great techniques that I'm going to share with you. So I'm just going to share some of these. Uh, I am sort of obsessed with this one. I am really liking this. So like I said, tonight is all about Lindy's uh, Mica Powders. And if you don't know what those are, I'll describe them to you in just a minute. And embossing folder. So that is our demo deal. So demo deal today and tomorrow, 33% off embossing folders and Lindy's Magicals Mica Powders. So uh, yeah, I am loving that one. Oh my gosh. And I'm loving this embossing folder. Now I, I am using the Lisa Horton Interference inks tonight. I haven't had a chance to really play with those. So I'm going to be showing you some techniques with inks and embossing folders. Um, loving that one. Uh, here's another embossing folder. This is called, let me find it here, Mandala Blooms, which again, I bought this one a couple of weeks ago. Haven't had a chance to use it, so I busted this one out, but I'm loving that too. So that's a gorgeous embossing folder. Here's another one I did, and this kind of uses all of the things. So I can't wait to share this one with you. That was fun to do. I also did a resist technique with embossing powder. Uh, this one is using the crackle paint, distressed crackle paint. And yeah, that was fun. I didn't actually finish this one because I ran out of time uh, because it takes a long time for this to, uh, to dry. But I actually like how it turned out. All those gorgeous cracks in there. And then I'm also going to be talking about uh, mixing your magical powders with your paste and being able to make your own uh, colors of paste. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, let's start with this one because that was the first one I actually did. So uh, the papers or the tags that I'm using, I did cut these. I did cut these tags out of the foundations paper, black foundations paper by Vicky Booten and white foundations paper by Vicki Putin. I love it. It is 140 pounds. It can take a lot of wet media abuse. It certainly can. So how did I create this? Now, if you're like me, maybe you've been collecting embossing folders for a long time. I have. I've got a, an entire box full of them and I love them all. They're all gorgeous. And sometimes I like to do them in kind of different ways. So how did I create this look here? Well, let me grab I'm going to grab an interference ink. This is the Sapphire Gold. Now, I will let you know that the interference inks, I don't know if we have any left, but I am getting a I am getting a restock of these on Wednesday. So if you do want any of these colors, make sure you go to the online store and click on that Notify Me button. And when these are in, you will get notified by email as soon as they're there. Okay, so how did I do that? Okay, so I used, this one was this embossing folder here. This one is called, let me get the name of it, uh, Entangled. 
and this one is in stock in the store. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a 3D embossing folder. And the other one I used is Spellbinders and it is called Magnolia Bloom, or no, Magnolia, Mandala Blooms. Mm. And both of these are 33% off. And all the other embossing folders as well. Okay, so I used Entangled. So let me grab that one. So if I hold this up to the camera, you can see that I've got ink. Are, are the cloud nines permanent? No, they're not. They're a dye pigment ink. These would be very close to um, an oxide. Only these have the shimmer in them. And they look different whether you use them on white or on black. So this one on black looks gold. On white paper, it looks blue. I know it's crazy. I did a whole video on this a couple of weeks ago, so I'm not really going to go into it a whole heck of a lot tonight because I've already done a whole video on it, but I'm loving these interference inks. They're amazing. Okay, so when I add ink to my embossing folder, I will usually do both sides. I mean, both sides are going to be embossed anyway, so some I usually ink both sides of my embossing folder because I don't know which side I'm going to like more. So I'm going to take my embossing folder here. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to take my ink pad and you can use any inks. Now, I wouldn't use anything permanent on your embossing powder and your embossing folders, uh, but using any dye ink or dye pigment hybrid. So I'm just going over with my, so you can see, look, it's blue, but when I put it on black, it's going to look gold. It's crazy. I'm loving these. Okay, so again, I'm just going to kind of press and twist and press and twist over top of both sides of my embossing folder. And because it's a pigment ink, it is going to stay wet for a little while. I am um, I am going to take this, my tag, and I am going to spray it with a little bit of water. Because this is a 3D embossing folder, uh, it has some really deep impression and it's going to... Uh, make a deep impression in that paper. If you missed your tag or paper or card beforehand, your paper is going to have a little bit more give to it. Okay. So I'm just going to go over to my platinum six, put this through. Okay, here we go. So now I'm going to open that up and look at how gorgeous that is. Oh my word. Look at it. Look, look, look. Yes, the water makes all the difference. Look at how stunning that is. Oh my gosh. So this is still a little bit damp, but that's an easy way to make a really gorgeous background. Like I'm doing tags, but you could very easily do this on... Um, on uh, card backgrounds as well. I mean, it's just stunning, just stunning. Now, maybe you're looking at this and you're like, oh my gosh, what are you gonna do? You've got like ink all over your embossing folder. Yep, I'm gonna show you an easy way to get that off though. I take a clean piece of paper towel, spray a good amount of water on both sides. There we go. Put my paper towel in. I'm gonna go back over to my my uh my platinum six here and put it through just like i am embossing paper there you go look you can see all the ink that came out and now my embossing folder is completely clean there's no ink on there isn't that gorgeous and how easy is that okay so there you go that's one easy way of adding ink to paper with an embossing folder. I mean, look at that. Oh, I'm obsessed. Look at it. And see, I've, I did both sides. I think I might have had more ink on this one than I did on this one, but I am still loving both of them. Absolutely stunning. Okay, let me put that one away. Okay, let me bring this one in here. I am also obsessed with this card. I did both sides with the interference inks. Just look at that shimmer. Isn't that gorgeous? So how did I do that? Well, I took a white tag 
and I'm going to spray water on my tag. Both sides. I'm going to put it in my embossing folder like so and through my machine again. Oops, dropped a plate. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now you can see on that one, I actually had some of the Lindy's Magicals in it. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so I am going to come in. Let's just use this one again so we can see what that blue looks like. Um, I had... Here we go. Now I do have separate brushes for my interference inks. Uh, I have a separate set for those. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to add my ink directly to my paper. And I am loving this ink. The shimmer to it is absolutely stunning. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to, let's switch over to Galaxy Dream. Let me grab my brush for that one. Here we go. And because these inks are a dye pigment hybrid, uh, like I said, they, uh, the pigment allows them to blend beautifully. I'm going to come back, blend down the center there. Perfect. Gorgeous. I'm going to take a little bit of the blue and put it on top of the darker color. And then I'm going to take some of this darker color and I'm going to come up here and put it on some of the lighter color. And just look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, so this would be the emboss side. This would be the deboss side. And you can absolutely ink the deboss side, which is exactly what I did on this one is I inked both sides. So how pretty would that be on a gift? I mean, both sides look absolutely stunning, right? Now, if you're doing this for a card, you're not necessarily going to see both sides. But you can just choose whichever side you like. Do you like the emboss side? Do you like the deboss side? And just make a choice. Uh, it depends on the project that I'm doing or the um, the subject, whether I want the em oops the embossed or the debossed. So I usually make a choice after after I get them embossed. Okay, there we go. Let moves wrong one. There we go. Just gonna cover these up really quick. Wipe off my surface, and then there you go. This is the deboss side using those inks on it. So you can see, depending on which way you turn it, you can see the different colors of the shimmer there. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. Okay. So there's an easy way to add ink to paper after you've embossed it. Now you can go across these. You can add ink again. Like if, if I wanted to add a different color, I could come in with an ink pad and rub it over, but I like it like this. Now this one, now that I'm looking at it really close, I did add a little bit of the brown to it, the distress oxide. And this is gathered twigs. I did go in and I did just kind of went over some of the edges just to pick up that brown. I do remember doing that now. So I did add a little bit of brown to that one. There you go. Yeah, you can ink first and then emboss. You can certainly do that. Uh, you just get different tones. So when you're inking, the raised edges will grab more of the ink than the lower 
the lower ones. So I usually like inking after, but you could certainly do it the other way as well. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Okay, let me put those away. Now I'm going to come in with this one. This one was fun. Now, the last thing I did on this one was I took the, the crackle paint. And after I did this is I went and I just lightly painted on the crackle paint on some of the raised edges. I don't know if you can see, but it's got this really cool crazing on it, which is the really, really tiny cracks. And it just, in person, it looks amazing. I absolutely love it. Okay, so how did I do this one? I start with a black tag. And I also started with some gesso. Just going to grab some gesso out here. There we go. Move my tags out of the way so they don't get wet. I'm going to add some water to this gesso because I want it nice and runny. Okay, so this is just, a, you can also use white paint. Um, I just have gesso, but you can also use white acrylic paint. So I'm just going to mix that up. There we go. Now let me bring in some of the magicals. So the Lindy's magicals, we've got in packs of this, packs of five. And I believe we have nine different kinds in stock right now. So the two I have are Steampunk Soiree. So you can see those colors there. And I also have Northern Lights. Those are the two that I'm working with. So I'm going to grab, um, let's use this one. I'm going to use Top Hat Teal. Oops, Top Hat Teal. And that one is out of Steampunk Soiree. Now I'm going to grab... Just a brush, not that one. Now I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to pick up some of that and I'm going to add it to my gesso. So these are a powder. So you can already see you mix it with the uh, the water in the paint and it just the colors just start to explode. There we go. Now I'm going to take my tag, I'm going to dip it in this. Now, yes, I can do it on a white tag. Of course I can, but I prefer the black. Oh, my word. I think I like this better than the first one I did. Oh, that gorgeous. Look at how gorgeous that is. Oh, yes. Stunning. Okay. Uh, before I move on, I am going to clean this up before I make a bigger mess. And I'm going to give this a dry. Before I get too far along in drying it, I am going to bring in another color. This one is Yesteryear Yellow. Yesteryear Yellow, and that is also out of Steampunk Soiree. I am just going to drop just a little. I just want to add just something else on this tag, just another color. So I'm only going to tap it in a few spots. That one might have been a little bit much. I'm just going to go over to the garbage and just kind of tap some of that off. Perfect. And now I'm going to just add a little bit of water back to my tag and look and see, look at those colors. That yellow is just, oh, that's gorgeous. I'm just going to kind of tip that right now. Just need a little bit more water. I had a little bit of powder there. Gorgeous. Just going to tip off a little bit of that excess, and now I'm going to dry it.
Okay, let me take a look. This one looks very different than the one I did because this one I used, I think I used green and not the blue. But look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Like that in itself, I would be like, this is the best thing. Love it. All right. Just got a little bit to dry here. Okay. Loving that. Cover this up before I spill it, get it all over the place. Now I need to run it through my embossing folder. Now this one I used entangled. Uh, I'm actually going to use the mandala this time. So you can see what they both look like. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, is she going to wet it? Oh, yeah, a little bit, just a little spray of water. So it's just, is very 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 light okay so let me close that in there hang on yeah that's the way I want it perfect putting it through my platinum Okay, here we go. Oh, look at the gorgeousness. I'm looking at the screen and I know you can hardly even see it, but what am I going to do? First of all, I need to dry it because I want to come in and sand it a little bit with my paper artsy sanding block. But I need to dry it because if I take my sanding block to this, it's just going to tear the paper up. So I want to make sure it's dry. So like I did on this one is I took a sanding block and this is the paper artsy sanding blocks. Any sanding block will do, but this is another reason why I use black, black paper is because I wanted to come in and kind of sand. Oh, Glenn just reminded me. I need to look at the screen for questions. I'm just so excited when I create. What is my preferred hand cleaner? Scrubby soap which if Glenn would have thought about it, he would have grabbed it out of the next room for me. But no, I love scrubby soap. I use it all the time. And we sell it at the store, three different uh, scents. Uh, they are all citrus. There's uh, lemon, lime, lemon, and orange. Orange is my favorite, but uh, I think our best seller is the lemon. Okay, look, oh my gosh, look at that. Isn't that like just sanding that back is just gorgeous. Okay, so what I'm going to do now I've sanded this so there's going to be some some dust on there. So I want to wipe that away. And then what I want to do is I'm going to bring in this crackle paint. Yes, I did add water to the gesso and it gives you that really great kind of marble look to it. Isn't that great? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to grab the crackle paint. I'm going to grab a flat brush and then I'm not going to paint over all of it. I could, but I just want to paint over some of it just so it will highlight. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm just going to paint the blooms, the Mantella blooms. And I'm going to set this aside. And I hope by the time we end, you're going to see some of the crazing. There we go. And my one right up there. Okay. So is this step necessary? No, I just like the look of it. So that's why I'm adding it. And then those areas where I put that is going to be shiny, but then it's going to have the crazing look to it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. So here's the original one I did and it's all dry. So there you can see where I painted it on and it has this, I don't know. It's just really great. It's just nice and, um, 
uh, cracked and it's just, it just does so much. I just love it. Oh, so, I uh, love it so much. Okay. So this is what scrubby soap is. Uh, sorry, I don't have any of the containers, but this is what scrubby soap is. So it's got this scrubby portion to it. And then it has the, um, oh, it smells so good. And then it has the glycerin soap attached to it. So yeah, I just lather it up, rub that off, and it just takes everything off. I love it. Glenn loves it. He uses it outside. He uses it in the garage. I mean, it just works so well. Okay, what else can you do with Lindy's Magicals? I've talked a lot about embossing folders, so let's focus a little bit more on the Magicals. So this one here, this one I did in black. I'm actually going to do the same technique, but this time I'm going to do it on white. So even though it has an embossing folder uh, using it, I am going to show you how I did the Magicals. Okay, so this is a piece of acetate. Uh, this came off the front of my um, foundations paper. The front of the foundations paper is one sheet of acetate. So this is what that is. So I'm going to take, uh, let me pick a color I haven't used yet. Let's do this one. This is Emerald A. There you go. Yes, Crystal, the leftover scrubber is perfect for stencils because it's scrubby enough, but it's also gentle, which I love. Okay, so Emerald A, and I know when I put this out, you're going to be like, that's that's yellow. That's not green. I know it's very, very uh, deceiving. So Emerald A, and what else should I put in there? Maybe I'll put in Bandolier Brown. Let's do that. Not as much brown, just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to take my spray bottle. Ooh, loving that already. Look at that. <coughs> oh, stunning. Now I'm going to take my acetate. I'm going to lay it in there. I'm just going to pick up little bits of it. I'm going to bring my tag in, and now I'm going to lay it on my tag. Look how fun that is. Oh, that's so much fun. Now I'm just going to cover that up so I don't get it all over myself. I'm going to dry this. liking that so far. Let's add another layer. There we go. Absolutely gorgeous. Loving that. That is so much fun. Yes, Heather, I agree. This green is amazing. So I like using the acetate because I feel like it gives me a little bit more control because I can see through it. I know exactly where the ink is going. Now I can do a dip and dip it in, but you're really not going to see where that ink is going until you flip over your piece of paper, right? So that's why I love using the acetate. It's just, I don't know, I like the control of it. Not that I don't like the, the dip and smush. I do that a lot, but... Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, of course, I've got all this wonderful ink and I can't waste that. So, yeah, I mean, I can go in with my acetate again and do it. But let's just do a dip and smush and just pick this up. I'm going to add a little bit more water. And we're just going to pick that up. I 
hi gloria yeah you can use either the magicals are a powder so they just need a carrier to help that color come through so water gesso paste texture paste uh those sorts of things just um uh, just use that and it will just help those colors just come to life I am loving this. So now I still got a lot left here. So I'm actually going to go back to my acetate. Love this background, but I feel like it just needs, just needs something else. It just needs a little bit more interest to it. So if I just come in and pick that up. Yeah, that's looking good now. Perfect. Loving that. And now I've made just a right mess here. I'm just going to bring in my cloth here just to pick these up. There we go. And I'm just going to clean off that piece of acetate. And now it is ready for me to use next time. And you can just use the same piece of acetate until it's just so gross and ugly you can't use it anymore. And then you just grab another piece. I think the front of my foundations paper, I took it and I cut it into, this is four by six is what I cut that into. So I believe I got six pieces um, out of a 12 by 12. So yeah, I've got lots of acetate to last me a while. Can you combine the mica powders to make different colors? Absolutely, you can. There you go. Oops, there's something on there. A little piece of plastic. So uh, thanks for that. Pixie Sparkles, are they the same? Um, uh, you know, I love the Pixie Sparkles, but I find the colors of these a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more uh, deeper. The Pixie Sparkles are great, but for me, they're a little bit more on the sparkly side rather than on the color side. Uh, they're great, and I love those, but these just have such a rich color. I mean, look at that. That's gorgeous. So Lisa was asking about mixing colors, and that's kind of what I did here. I did a little bit more of a mix. So let me go back to... Um, Oh, here it is. Hockey Puck Black. That one's out of the Northern Lights. I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to use, let's go back to Top Hat Teal. So can you mix the colors? Absolutely, you can. I did mix them here. I did use the brown and the green, but I didn't use much of the brown. They have a shimmer to them. I don't know if I, if I tip it. Oh, there we are. See, you can see the, the mica shimmer. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, so it does shimmer. Let me bring in, do I have another one? Uh, I don't see it here. Okay, so let's do these two, and then I will finish off with those ones there. So if I use, this one is Top Hat Teal. Top Hat Teal, and this one is Hockey Puck Black. I'm not going to use much of the black because it is very, very dark. There we go. I'm going to take another tag. Let me pick up some of that teal. Let's come over here and pick up some of that black. So, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. The black can be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm going to dry this. And I'm going to add more of the blue. There we go. This one is very dark. I like it though. So before I dry it, I'm just going to come in. I just want to clean this up. Normally I wouldn't waste all that gorgeous color, but I just want to wipe that out of my way. So if I was to take my water, if 
Um, oh, yes. Glenn posted the link to Cassandra's Crafty Claws, which is these claws that I'm using here. I'm using those. They're absolutely lovely. So these are water reactive. So I can come in and I can spray with water and it will reactivate. And then I could take a cloth lift ink off so they are still water reactive even when they're dry but look at that one that one almost looks like galaxy i need to like splatter that with white paint and that would look like a galaxy wouldn't oh i might need to do that oh yeah okay so what else can you do with these well let me bring in my mini misters I've made sprays using my mica powders. So there's three. This one is emerald. Uh, this one is hockey puck black. And which other one did I do? Oh, top hat teal. Here we are, top hat teal. And then I'm just going to show you how you make it. So I've got another mini mister here. Uh, it just has some water in it. It's about halfway full of, wa of um, water. And I'm going to open it up. I'm going to open up my mica powder. I'm going to take just a little spatula, pick some up, and I'm going to put it in my mini mister, close this up, and give that a shake. There we go. So now I've made some mica sprays. And I hardly use anything. There's like nothing in there. Uh, I'm not going to use my last tag. Let me bring in another piece of paper. So now I've made my own. I'm going to use, look, brand new stencil. This one's one of the new All in Create ones. I think they had six new ones and they all have something to do with circles. So did Julia get them? Mm-hmm. Yes, she did. There we go. Gorgeous. Why were there very shiny spots on the green tag you just finished? Um, oops. Water leaking out of that one. Here we go. And let me do the green one that I did. There we go. So yeah, I can spray them through a stencil. Look how gorgeous that is. But now look at this. I have this. This is fantastic. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip it over top of my tag and do a mono print of all that gorgeous ink. Oh, yeah. Oh. Isn't that gorgeous? Ugh, love it. Love, love, love. And I love these. I've had these magicals for quite a few months. I've made quite a few sprays with them. I've used them a lot. And they will probably last me for a good long time. Okay. Now, what time are we getting? Okay, a little bit after 7. We're good. Let me just clean this off with my crafty cloth. There we go. Clean stencil. Okay, dokey. Actually, before I move on, let me, let me just clean this. Or not clean it, dry it. Look how fun that is. Oh, I love that. Okay, so this is a, another stencil. What's this one called? This one's called Daisy Wheel. Oof, look at that. Oh, I'm loving that. Okay, now I have already run out of tags, if you can believe that. So let me find. Er, here's a large Dina tag. Okay, I love resist techniques. I just do. They're amazing. So I'm going to use Distress Glaze for this resist technique since I've got these mica sprays. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab a blending tool. I've got a dome foam on there. I'm just going to stick it in my micro glaze. 
picks them up. Just gonna squish that around there on my on my mat. I'm gonna put my stencil on my tag, and I'm just gonna come and apply this distress micro glaze across my stencil. Okay, so the distress micro glaze is kind of like sort of like Vaseline is what it is. Now you're probably not, I mean, you can kind of see it on there, right? So now it's got like this resist product on there. So if I come in with my, let's use emerald green. Oh my gosh, these keep falling over. I'm going to come with my emerald green and see what happens. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, Okay, so now what do you do? Because now you got that micro glaze on there. Well, you dry your ink and then you can wipe the micro glaze away. Okay, let me grab uh mica sprays that um are they like that they're they're kind of like that yeah so these are my mica sprays which are already basically a spray right um so yeah i would say they're like that okay so I just went in and buffed away that distressed microglaze, and there you go. No, they're not a Canadian company. No, no, no. But this one is called Northern Lights. So everything is basically Canadian. Hockey puck, Canadian bacon, emerald A, maple syrup, bronze, and polite people purple. <laughs> is that what they call us? Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, so I've shown you you can make your own mica sprays, which is great. And again, you can mix the different micas to make your own shades. You can totally do that. Um, now what I'm going to do is I am going to put one of these through the embossing folder. Uh, let's use this one just because it's my favorite. I'm not going to spray it this time. This... This isn't that deep of an impression like the other one. There we go. There we go. So now I have an I have embossed it and that looks amazing yes they all have mica in them all of the lindy's magical mica powders yep okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come with um let's do this one crushed velvet let me find my brush for that one here we go now i'm a heavy-handed blender I am. So I am really trying to very lightly go over. I'm not trying to fill anything in, but I just wanted to add a little bit of this purple color to some of those rage, raised edges. So I'm just very lightly going over those. Now on the edges, I do want to add a little bit more ink to the edge. But on those raised edges, I'm just going to kind of just gently go over that. I just want that embossed embossing to just pick up a little bit of that ink. I'm going to add a little bit more to the edges. Give it a little bit more. There we go. There we go go. Isn't that pretty? Oh, Mari, you got your Lisa Hortonings today. Oh, I know you're going to be creating beautiful things with those. 
Isn't that fun? So using the interference ink with the micas are great because they're both, they both have the shimmer to them. So if I tip that, yeah, you can see the gold shining from that mica. And then the uh, Lisa Horton inks also have the shimmer to them. But isn't that great? Stunning. Oh my gosh. It's so gorgeous. Now, uh, let me bring this one in. Before I go, I want to share with you the crafter math is happening. I am working in a very small space because of all the mess. Okay, so this one, I did this just before I went live. So this is a, this one. I used, uh, did I use this one? Yes, I did. Uh, this is the uh, crackle paste and this one is opaque. The other one I used here is translucent. This one was translucent. So it's very shiny and you can see the blue ink in behind there. But can you mix it with paste? Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be you. There we go. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, Stamperia, which is what I'm using. You can use uh, Tim Holtz, any texture paste, uh, anything like that you can use. Let me just wipe that off. Cover that up. Okay, which color haven't I used? Polite People Purple. Polite People Purple. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of that. Drop it there onto my texture paste. I'm going to use my spatula to just work that color in. And look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Okay, let me grab this and let me grab a stencil. I'm just going to pick all of that up. There's not that much there. Didn't make a whole heck of a lot, so I'm not going to be able to do a massive a massive spot, but let's just do that. Still some on there. And that is the Mica Minerals mixed with a texture paste. Now this is a crackle paste. So when it dries, it is going to look, and if you can see that, there is the cracks in this one. So once you let it dry. I just let it dry. I don't take a heat tool to it. I just let it dry. So, and that's what I did here. And look at all those beautiful cracks. Ooh, I love it. Okay. I'm going to clean this up because if you let your texture paste dry on your spatula or your stencils, you're just asking for trouble, basically. You're just asking for just a whole heap of trouble. Okay. So that is my demo using embossing folders and the mica minerals, the Lindy's magic, magical mica powders. Oh, these names, they are tongue twisters for me. Okay, there we go. Clean stencil. So I hope you enjoy tonight's demo using embossing folders and mica. Oh, I forgot about this one. Remember, this is the one I painted with the crackle paint. I made this earlier and then I put the crackle paint on the little mandalas and they are now dry and they've got this wonderful crazing. It is, I don't think I can get it to focus on there, but it is absolutely stunning. It is gorgeous. So there's that one. This one with the inking. Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed with these interference inks from Lisa Horton. And uh, yeah, that one turned out really well too. Gorgeous. Okay, so 
That is it for tonight. So one week from tonight is our 50th episode of Monday Night Live, and it's going to be a create-along. We have one kit left, one kit left for Monday Night Live episode 50 create-along, and we will be creating a cell phone stand. These are included in your kit. And don't worry if you didn't kit a kit, it's fine. You can still watch. There's still going to be plenty of techniques and fun things. And so I look forward to next week. It's going to be so much fun. Have a great evening, everyone. And don't forget about the demo deal on the Lindy's Magicals and on the embossing folders. And we've got so many great embossing folders. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. I can't wait to see you next week. Bye.